All right, tech family, Geekbench is undoubtedly one of the most common performance benchmarks out there. Almost every desktop, laptop, phone, tablet, and even toaster reviewer uses Geekbench to determine how fast a device is. And it has just been massively updated with several new performance tests, as well as new data sets that better represent the real world performance needs in 2023. In fact, multi-core testing has got a complete overhaul. So today, I thought I'd take a moment to answer the question, are my laptops as fast as I thought they were, now that this benchmark is more representative? I actually had this video ready for you all about a month ago. I was hoping to get it out the moment Geekbench 6 was released, but I ended up taking some time off to travel and see friends and family. Sometimes it's healthy to prioritize life, and now I feel refreshed and ready to smash out some videos. Now. If you're wondering what has been updated, examples would be using larger sized images that are more representative of those that modern smartphone cameras take. Another example would be a new background blur test to mimic that popular effect that people use when on a Zoom call so that they can hide their, say, unmade bed in the background or whatever else is in the background that they don't want to be seen. I'll post a link down below if you'd like to know more of what was updated. But it's things like this that make this new version of Geekbench version 6 more realistic for the current day. Anyway, to see the difference between how laptops perform on it versus the prior version, I'm going to test both on a bunch of different laptops with many of the major processors that have come out in the last couple of years. By the way, I am using the updated version of both in my tests, and all tests were run specifically for this video. I didn't use any of my prior test results. Now, before I show you the results, important note, you cannot compare an older Geekbench 5 score with a Geekbench 6 one. Even though they appear to be on the same scale, they are not. The way each version of Geekbench works is to assign a certain processor a baseline score. Then the performance of your processor is compared to that one, i.e. If your score is twice as much as the baseline, your processor is twice as fast. In the case of the older Geekbench 5, that was a score of 1000 for an i3-8100 desktop processor. By the way, that processor was launched in 2017. For Geekbench 6, this is now a score of 2500 for an i7-12700, a processor that was launched in 2022, five years newer. So here are my single core results. As I just mentioned, you can't say that the i9-13900HX is 35% faster than we thought it was because Geekbench 6 gave it a score of 2805 versus 2075 for Geekbench 5. These scores are on a completely different scale. The thing to focus on is the rank order. That will allow us to tell if a laptop is faster or slower than we thought it was. I've sorted them from slowest to fastest based on their Geekbench 5 results. What you'll notice is for the most part, the order is very similar for Geekbench 6, with the exception of the 12700H processor in my 17-inch Dell XPS and my M2 Pro 12-core processor in my MacBook Pro 14. Under Geekbench 6, both these perform better than we previously thought they did, particularly the i7-12700H, by the way. Switching to multi-core, the only real difference here is that the XPS 13 Plus with its i7-1260p processor is faster than we thought it was. It now beats out the Legion Slim 7 with its AMD Ryzen 9 6900HX processor. I do want to remind folks at this time, Geekbench does not max out the multi-core performance of a laptop's processor for any duration of time. You'd want a benchmark like Cinebench to do this. In such a test, I would expect the AMD Ryzen 9 processor to smash that Intel i7-1260P processor. Geekbench seeks to simulate common real-world performance tasks, not sustain max performance. Alright, so far we haven't really learnt a lot. But what happens if we instead convert the results to how much as a percent each processor is faster than the slowest one in my test, i.e. we normalise the results? Now, when we look at single core, we can see some interesting things. Under Geekbench 6, the fastest processor in the test, the i9-13900HX, is 42% faster than the slowest processor in my test, the Ryzen 7 7736U. Under Geekbench 5, it was only 37% faster. The biggest gap though is again the i7-12700H in my XPS 17. Geekbench 6 shows that it is actually 20% faster in single core than the slowest processor, whereas Geekbench 5 stated it is only 13%. Generally, in single core performance, the heavier more modern workloads of Geekbench 6 are showing that most of these recent processors perform better than we thought they did. Let's switch to multi-core. 
Here it is the opposite. Geekbench 5 was way overstating how large a performance difference there was between the slowest processor in my test and the fastest. Under Geekbench 5, the i9-13900HX looked like it was almost four times faster than the i7-1165G7. Now under Geekbench 6, it is less than three times as fast as that processor. Please note, as I mentioned, in Geekbench 6, they did significantly rework the way multi-core is tested. In the older versions, all cores attempted to complete different tasks. In this new version, all cores cooperate to complete a shared task. This better tests the large number of cores and especially the variety of cores available in modern laptops. Now let's take a look at integrated graphics performance. The stack ranking of these processors was exactly the same between Geekbench 5 and 6, but the difference between the graphics of each processor was far understated on Geekbench 5 as in the fastest integrated graphics of the MacBook Pros and the newer Ryzen processors are much faster than we thought they were, when compared to the slower integrated graphics performance of Intel. So, in conclusion, if a processor was faster than another one in Geekbench 5, for the most part it still is in Geekbench 6. That being said, the extent to which a processor is faster or slower than another one has changed. In single core, the difference has widened a bit, with faster processors being a decent amount faster than we thought they were. In multi-core, performance gains from one processor to the next were substantially overstated in the older Geekbench 5. And in integrated graphics, the performance differences from one processor to the next were understated, massively so. So try downloading Geekbench 6 yourself. Let me know in the comments below what score your laptop gets and whether compared to my results it's faster or slower than you thought your laptop was. Well, that's all for today folks. Bit of a technical video, but I personally was genuinely interested in seeing the difference of how my laptops performed with Geekbench 6. If you like this video, you know what to do. Smash that like button and get subscribed. Not only does it show your appreciation for the insane amount of work that goes into making these, but as I always say, it makes my mother very proud. If you're looking for advice on individual laptop decisions, check out our Discord server where vetted laptop advisors are standing by to help you out. Till next time, go do something awesome with your day and I will catch you later.